<laughs> next to each other and on top of each other. Now we're talking about a super cut. I can get behind. <laughs> Let's tie up these dangling threads. Okay, so. We're back. Oh, yeah. We're at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. An anthropomorphic picture. <laughs> Not a picture. A no. picture. Why wouldn't he shatter when he tried to break through the One would wall? think that the wall would be stronger than this picture. Is it that his arms, he's leading with his arms, and his arms are so powerful. Maybe his arms are made of diamond. Got arms like a diamond. <laughs> Got arms like a diamond. <laughs> and you know, diamonds can cut brick. <laughs> they are the sharpest That's right. thing known to man. We have a missing wall in our home. Oh, so yeah. a lot of have times- Have you ever found I'll, it, by the way? No. A lot of times, I can't remember if the house it was, was there like when you bought it. Yeah, got it. I think it was there when you bought it because I remember. I feel like I feel like we wouldn't have bought the house if it had a missing wall. Yeah. No, I remember going over there and going, "I love okay, that wall." So you remember seeing it? Yeah, okay, I remember yeah. seeing the wall. Yeah, and then the last time yeah, I was yeah. there, I was like, "What happened to that wall?" Yeah, the wall's gone. And yeah. so I'll be watching TV, and sometimes you know, like a a stray dog will come into the house. And I think right. I should be out there with that dog running around. Right. Yeah. I certainly shouldn't be in here with him. He's terrifying. <laughs> he's, he's covered in grease and he's snarling at me. <laughs> Why is he covered in grease? Uh, he's been sleeping under cars and stuff. Hanging out with John Travolta and yeah, Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> covered in grease. <laughs> you can just tell he's been watching grease a lot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just covered in it. Um, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Hey, Kool-Aid. <laughs> And I've looked up haphazard. It is haphazard. There's oh, no you. alternate pronunciation. I'm, I'm glad you took the time out from this recording to check. <laughs> uh, what I had, would I, I know about words? I had an argument with a friend. I will not name him because he is a famous podcaster, but I had an argument maybe 15 years ago with him where uh, on an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, hmm. Xander said integral a lot. He was saying integral, integral, integral. And this person said, why does he keep mispronouncing this? This is driving me crazy. And mm -hmm. I said, I believe it's either... Integral. 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 Or integral. 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 That's not integral. By it's the way. certainly not integral. Certainly not that, but it's it's either integral or integral. And this person said, no, it's not, and and got very upset with me. And then I looked it up in the dictionary and said, see, there's two different pronunciations. And he said, Well, my dictionary doesn't have that other one. And he stormed out. Now this you don't want to reveal his name because this guy wrote his own dictionary. This is very exciting. <laughs> All right. It's my friend Miriam. <laughs> Miriam Webster? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Brother to Daniel. Um, my my first girlfriend, the mm -hmm. first girlfriend I ever had in high school, Ooh, baby. I used that that's, word and I pronounced it integral and she uh -huh. laughed at me. Laughed at you? In like the most I can understand way. with you. She, she had that like this sort of silent laughter like, <laughs> what an idiot. Oh. And she said, it's integral. And I did the same fucking thing. I looked it up. Really? And I saw there were both pronunciations were And did you acceptable. laugh then at her? No. And did you laugh last? No, I stopped laughing after that. I think if you laugh in someone's face, mm -hmm. you need to be about one inch from them to know. Otherwise, it's not laughing in their face. Yeah. You need to be nose to nose or your nose at, in his toes and his toes in your nose. I suppose. How long was that relationship? Oh, I think like... Did it last one more day after you looked up? One more day. <laughs> one more you're, you're, day. You're clapping like you're in the audience. I, I like, oh, he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love that when I was when I was in musicals and I was on stage. I would try to applaud when the title of the song came up and someone sang it. So it was like when you were in the musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So say I'm. This is the first <laughs> instance that came up. But say I, I and I know this is a solo song and no one should be on stage. But during uh, Over the Rainbow, when Dorothy sings it in Wizard of Oz, sure. say I was a farmer who was like the next door neighbor or something, and they had me just out of the spotlight, but pitching you know bales of hay. A or perfect something. time to have distracting extras. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But say I would be there, and uh, Dorothy would would be singing. You know, well, happy little bluebirds fly beyond. Uh, or how's it how's it started? It goes. Uh, 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 I <laughs> wish that I could be inside a place that is not Kansas times away from here. <laughs> I wish that I could be inside a place that is not Mountain Time. 
<laughs> is Kansas in Mountain Time? I oh, took a stab. I don't know. I took a stab. Let's Maybe they're Central Timers. Let's look it up. Look it up, Scotty. Look it up. <laughs> look, look it up, up Scotty. Scotty. Look it up. Look, look it up, you're, Scott. You're, it's you're, mountain time. Mountain uh, time. Mountain time. Mountain time. Congratulations, Kansas. <laughs> the Mile High City. <laughs> so anyway, Dorothy would be out there going, blah, 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 bluebirds. And then she would launch into somewhere Ooh, over sure. the rainbow. And then me, as a, I would go, oh. As the farmer. <laughs> yeah, and try to apply it. Now, <laughs> did anyone did anyone direct these shows and take issue with you no, doing this nope. on stage? <laughs> no, we had no directors. It was a very unique art form where it was plays where we just went out there and did whatever we wanted. It sounds like utter chaus. Yep. Chaus. Um, Acceptable pronunciation. Is it really chaus? Nope. <laughs> no, I did not think so. But you had me fooled. It's a little weird that there's so many different languages. Right? You know what I mean? It's impractical. It really is because you go to these different countries and, and it's so easy to get to countries now. You just like hop on a, a little puddle jumper. You hop on your private plane. You go right over there. <laughs> right. And then you get off the plane. Us and a bunch of other people standing waiting for our bags. Right. It took a long time. And then took everyone's just... So- <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I don't know why it's a gotcha, but it is somehow. It is. It is. You dared to say something. <laughs> I tried to slip that, that past you. I tried to slip that that common Can't phrase get past you. By me, oh, you got me again. And suddenly, everyone's speaking a different language. It's yeah. like, whoa, whoa, slow your roll. Uh, stay in your lane. Stay in- <laughs> <laughs> but if you could only speak one language, which one would it be? Because I'm not convinced it's English. English is not uh, the most pleasant sounding language. This is the thing. I think we need to vote on what the prettiest language is. The, the some would pleasing. say the romance languages are pretty, but at the same time, do they have enough in them? I And this is really a question for linguists and cunning linguists. <laughs> I think I get what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but – are the romance languages like Italian and Spanish, are there enough words in them to be poetic? Because English has so many words. So many we words. We took words from other languages. Oh, yeah, and we just adapt them. So there's so, there's so many different ways to say things. Now, I would say that people who speak English don't use a lot of them, mm-hmm. including myself, and I don't even know how to pronounce half of them. No, you're terrible. Yes. And I think that you have a learning disability. <laughs> <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I think, I'm definitely not learning anything new. I say we go back to basics and we do Greek or Latin. Greek or Latin, that's you think what so? Everybody speaks. Yes. But what about Chinese? Too hard. It's hard, but is it, is it not hard. rewarding? And it's not I, fair. Just because the majority of people are Chinese right now, then we're supposed to all do look, that. Look, look, look. I'm not saying that we all have to learn it. I'm saying that we. This is an alternate universe where just click. Everyone speaks it. What is the most pleasurable to speak? Is it Chinese? I don't know that. I don't know that's the most pleasurable to speak. It's not the most pleasurable Although to I don't listen know. to. I don't know. But maybe they love it. When you understand it, maybe it's like, oh, my God, how beautiful that sounds. So they would say the romance languages would be because they're so, mm, buongiorno. You know, they're just so wonderful to listen to. Italian, I think, is an easy language to speak and also sounds very nice. It sounds very. That's all Italian, folks. Love it. Um, That's what it was before World War II. Oh, and then they don't like to change it. Yeah, we hate them now. (laughs) (laughs) Boy, how things change. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Am I right? What does that mean? I hate Italians. (laughs) (laughs) Can I say that I hate the audience? I think they're dumb. No. They don't get things. No. What? (laughs) At Christmas, you tell the truth. <laughs> that, who, who said that? At Christmas, you tell the truth like it was a thing? Yeah, that crazy person. The crazy man with the signs. In what Love Actually. In Love Actually. Oh, yeah, the right. Yeah, the guy that was in love with his best friend's wife. And he just says it in the movie like, at Christmas, you tell the truth. Yeah. Like, this is a thing we've all agreed on. Yeah. Stupid. Now, I can't remember if it was a reference to something that was said earlier in that movie. But I also don't care. <laughs> I do not care to watch it again yeah, in order yeah, yeah. to find out. I'm, I'm happy to be wrong about it and still feel the way that I feel. <laughs> Enough. Enough now. 
what you guys do for Comedy Bang Bang, if this is your first time listening, what are you doing? This is insane. Like, what sort of mental illness am I trying to cure by doing this show? Are I you trying know. to cure it? <laughs> You're trying to exorcise your Well, this, this city is a disease, I will say, and I'm the cure. Marion Cobretti? Die! Cobretti. Ugh, drives me crazy. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to fill a hole inside me. Oh, okay, really? Yeah. It and will never get affirma- filled. Oh, it never will. It'll never yeah. get filled. What was that caused by? Ooh, let's see. Teachers like Dr. Horn? No, Dr. Horn, tough but fair. <laughs> Vermilion. I'm not backing him on that one. Botulism. <laughs> the most beautiful word. Syphilis. <laughs> Syphilis is actually a pretty word. It is. You know what else is? <laughs> chlamydia. 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 Oh, I'm my, never getting rid of you. My darling chlamydia. By the way, Paul F. Tompkins is here. Hello, Hi, Paul. I'm me. I am me and I am him. I like me. My my Do wife you, likes me. My wife's like me. My wife. You both like you. That's from Plain Straits Automobiles. <laughs> Oh, is it? <laughs> Very sad scene with John Candy. Oh, yeah. Rest in power. He, rest in power. He's pretending his wife's still alive, right? Full his of, wife. Full of... <laughs> full. <laughs> Friday Night Lights. I can't wait till next year. That's going to be so <laughs> I can't great. wait. I hope I remember it. I think you're really good at the callbacks. I think you... I think you... There are very few instances where you've missed a my wife. <laughs> I... You know, though, I, I haven't done... Uh, the my wife's recently. I'm trying to think of how long it's been. Yeah, it's been. It's been a couple of months, I think, <laughs> since we've done it. Every year, right after Thanksgiving, uh, we put up the American holiday. The American holiday. We put up the voting uh, best of, for the best of. So it goes from Thanksgiving to Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I need time to tabulate the votes. I need time I need to, time to tabulate, tabulate the votes. The votes. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I need time to uh, make the edits, which is a three or four day process for me. Time to make the edits. Time to make the edits. That's a Christmas tradition for me. Yeah, out there on Christmas Eve, just making the edits. <laughs> Listening to 14 episodes of my show. Now, one time you fell asleep and some elves made the edits. They did. I woke up and I was like, these edits are not good. No. They're they, made by tiny hands. They're made with tiny, tiny hands with tiny scissors. It's, a, it's based on Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. The Santa Claus myth. He is, he's known to say ho, ho, ho. Yes. The myth of Chris Kringle. Chris Kringle, St. Nick, mm-hmm. Old Scratch, mm-hmm. Beelzebub. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mephisto. <laughs> Mephisto. <laughs> Someone said Satan is king. What? Did you Why? hear that? I did not hear that. Someone said Satan is you king. You didn't hear very clearly in your headphones someone saying Satan is king. I think that is just something that you're maybe hearing that doesn't exist. I can't imagine Can I ask you a true. question? Maybe it's much too early in the game. Uh-huh. Ah, but I thought I'd... Uh, Ask you just the same. Sure. What are you doing, New Year? New Year's Eve, jizz. <laughs> Saves it. To all the acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Should all the acquaintance be lower. Fuck. Why are you? Oh my God! Are you yawning in the middle of a song? And triggered a yawn. Oh, triggered. Hashtag trigger warning. Triggered. I yawned. <laughs> I yawned. I yawned. I yawned. Yawned. I yawned. Yawned. I yawned. 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 Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne for old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for all lang. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I remember when I was young, Star Wars was something all the little boys liked. And I dressed up like Luke Skywalker. I dressed up uh, like Han Solo. Uh, and uh, for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that is our personalities oh, right there. Not for Halloween. Oh, I, really? I just did it. You're sort of dressed up like Han Solo right now. You're wearing a vest. <laughs> Got a white shirt and a vest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, my mom made me a costume, made me a Han Solo vest, and I wore, I think, a white turtleneck. Ah. <laughs> um, Why? You wanted to cover up the old Adam's apple? Or was yeah, that the I wanted, only white I garment you had? I wanted to think I was a woman pretending to be a man. <laughs> So <laughs> it was a whole Victor, very progressive. It was a Victor Victoria, right? It's a guy. So um, I and I had a like a plastic, it's like a um, Caesar Romero mustache Joker thing. Yeah, exactly. And I had a um, I had a, a ray gun, you know, mm-hmm. um, Ronnie Ray gun. Will <laughs> oh no, Nancy. And I remember vividly. <laughs> what, he's imitating the other guy. He, he told George H. W. <laughs> George H. W. Bush was that's where he got it from. Do you think Reagan thought that impression was hilarious? Like when he saw Dana Carvey, obviously Reagan I bet, watched yeah, us. Yeah, obviously. Well, he had nothing else to do. Yeah, he's retired. He's losing his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, well, flip on the old boob tube. <laughs> anyway, well, so. I was doing my not guy. What? Musical guest. Oh, so I was trick-or-treating as mm-hmm. Han Solo. And I remember a lady asking me who I was supposed to be. And I said. Who are you, vest guy? I said Han Solo. And she said, well, where's Gretel? <laughs> ah, what a dumb old she, lady. A stupid old lady. And you still remember her now? I hope oh, she's dead. I can see her mind in my I hope oh. she's dead, and I hope her children are dead, and I hope their children are dead. Guess what they are? Oh, shit. I took care of it. <laughs> oh, bro. I never forget, and I never forgive. Kill shot straight to the head. <laughs> it is interesting that you bring that up because I'm an interesting person. <laughs> Uh, the show where we talk to interesting people, full stop. So the, we're talking by the ladies, the late 80s. That's right, by the ladies. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. What about that for a Beastie Boys reference right? in Star Wars? This hey, is, ladies. This is Admiral Hilades. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Hilades <laughs> Hel- <laughs> in the place. We're calling out to you. <laughs> <laughs> they fit that line of dialogue. Admiral Hilades, in the place. We're calling out to you. As you can see, the plans for the Death Star have commenced. <laughs> you sound really, you should be in one of these films. I'm telling you. You went to the premiere and everything. Were you like trying out some of these lines on Ryan yeah, Johnson? Yeah, during the movie. People were mad. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you wanted to- Daisy gr- Ridley- Pinched my leg really hard to make me stop. Really? Like we were That's in church. sexual harassment. <laughs> well, she didn't do it in a sexual way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still, there's a power dynamic there. She's wa- the star of the movie. Do, the a, sh- do a Saoirse Ronan right it's now. It's me, Saoirse Ronan. <laughs> I me. love Brooklyn. <laughs> what is Brooklyn again? Is that... Uh, it's a movie about Brooklyn. Is it the movie where the Irish pe- person comes over? Yes, the movie where the Irish person comes over. With uh, Shua, 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 Shua Ronan. Yes, I did see it. Shua Ronan. Shua Ronan. Shua Ronan. You make me feel so young. When you're young, uh, as the killer said, uh, you, you're you're just so happy that people are being silly. Turning to your spouse. I and think saying, I'm turning to your spouse. I really <laughs> think so. <laughs> Whistling choir. What, what if, if we did, did that? that? We'll never do it. Until then, you'll have to muddle through, through somehow. somehow. So take those goddamn sunglasses off your right face now. <laughs> this is how we do it. Science! 
A girl named Drew. A girl named Drew. You can't start too low when you're doing Johnny Cash. You can't start too low when, when you're, you're doing, doing Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash. You can't start too low when you're doing Johnny Cash. You can't start too low when you're doing Johnny Cash. You can't start too low when you're doing Johnny Cash. Just. Make a pizza. <laughs> Jizz. A whole new world. Don't you dare shut the door. A whole new world. I'm gonna kick you in the face. Sail around the nurse. <laughs> Sail around the nurse. All around the house. Here's what they do when they try to catch a mouse. Sail around the nurse. Sail around, around the nurse. nurse. Yada, da, 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 da. Sail around the nurse. nurse. Contact. It's, it's the season, season for the reason. <laughs> Were you there when they crucified <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> Come on, we have a good time. All right, we, we have a good we... time. Hold on, there's more time for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah! It was the yeah! first one. Oh, yeah! Bake it a plain cake. Bake it a plain cake. All right. Come on, baby, do 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 that conga. Hey, it's not only the rhythm that's gonna get you <laughs> through the years. I um, never let, let you down. down. Listen, the tone of the song is like, here's the great things I did for you. Hey, guess what? I never <laughs> let you down. You fucking <laughs> let down, bitch. How dare you? <laughs> you let yourself down. I'm not the one who did it. <laughs> Go make my pizza. Get, <laughs> get Dick Francis on the case. <laughs> You're crumbelievable. <laughs> Let's get ready to crumble! <laughs> Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy. 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 Jeremy Piven. Let's talk about who came to, to the episode that we, we do. A, B, A, D. <laughs> it's easy as. <laughs> One, two, three. Um, I think of little children saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. and flipping the script and pledging to overturn the United States government. <laughs> and I'm so thrilled. I don't know why you're thinking of that. Well, it makes me happy. <laughs> okay. All right. Really? <laughs> so you're an anarchist? I, I guess so. I guess so. Well, I'm not an anarchist, but I like the idea that little kids are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I believe the children are certainly a future. How should we handle this? Mm, let them live? <laughs> 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 that is the lyric of the song. I believe the children, children are the future. future. Let, let them live and let them show the way. No, Lead the, the end. way. It's the end. Oh, let That's them live the, the end. end. <laughs> yep. Roger Roger Neverstein. Roger Neverstein. <laughs> Solid as a rock. Do you know what? What? Solid as a rock acronyms to soar. Soar. I think that's beautiful. It's SAR, actually. No, it but doesn't. I just realized. <laughs> Solid or a rock. Solid or a rock. Jizz. But I hope the Cantina Band comes back. I, I want to so know too. what is going on with the Cantina Band 40 years later. What if, here's what I hope. I mm -hmm. hope that the movie is very long and the mm -hmm. middle part is a documentary on the Cantina <laughs> yes. Band, like the Eagles documentary. <laughs> yeah, or, or like, uh, what is it, Gimme Shelter or something? What are those movies? That, what, uh, the Long Band Home. What did Martin Scorsese... The Long <laughs> Band Home. <laughs> what did Martin Scorsese direct about the band? No, you're right. The Long Band Home. <laughs> okay, I thought it was right. Yeah. By the way, if you're just <laughs> listening to this show for the first time... Fuck you. <laughs> you that's hate it. That's essentially what's being... You hate it. Or do you love it and you'll hate the regular show? Oh, that's true. Uh -huh. if, you, if you're thinking, boy, this is the show. I could listen to these two guys all day. You are sorely disappointed. Scott, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Maybe it's just too early in the game. Oh, but I, I thought, thought I'd, I'd ask you just, just the same. same. What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's, New Year's Day. That's 
right. Bono has come by the, the uh, studio. It's so good to see him. What a pleasure it is to be here. <laughs> My resolution is to join the revolution. <laughs> and and bring and restore them. <laughs> so you're going to gather together Wendy, Lisa, Dr. Z. That's right. The whole gang. <laughs> oh, and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, Lisa, and Dr. Z. Z and and the Scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> Why wasn't Dr. Z in the TV show Scrubs? I if oh. I could ask Zach Braff one question, it would be that. If I could ask Zach Braff one question, I'd ask him why Doctor Z never appeared in Scrubs. He's the most famous guy in Scrubs of all time. Well, are you forgetting Hawkeye Pierce? Yeah, why wasn't Hawkeye part of that as well? <laughs> they should have gotten. <laughs> they should have gotten everyone who's ever appeared on screen in Scrubs <laughs> to make a cameo in Scrubs. You have to think that the writers brought that up. At least once. Can't we get every single person who's been on screen in Scrubs from the disorderlies? That's right. <laughs> but Bill Lawrence shut it down. To the young doctors in love. <laughs> hey, now you're talking my language. Gary Marshall. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> oh, he's gone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he just wanted to say it's... that we were talking his language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the very next week. What song what, is that? I joined the, the in with cat you. Came, the cat came back. The cat came back the very next day. The cat came. Did you sing that at camp? Somehow I sang that at camp. That I was like a big like campfire a thing. thing. The cat came back the very next day. The cat came back. We thought it was a goner, but the cat came back. He just, just couldn't, couldn't stay away. away. Real jazzy for There goes the Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider Let's the, do this. Uh, you sing Spider-Man and I'll sing Cat Came Back. Five, six, seven, eight. The cat Spider came Man, back the very Spider next day. The cat came back. We thought it was a goner. The cat came back. Came back. He just couldn't stay. The cat, cat came back. We thought it was a goner. The out. cat came back. He <laughs> just couldn't stay away. <laughs> Get out of my dreams and into my car. Those are your choices. You have two choices. And I know you can't control the first. You have two choices. Get out of my dreams or get into my car. They're going to find you. You're going to be taken out of my dreams and into my car. Into my car. <laughs> um... Movies and, and entertainment in general are just like tedious affairs. Yeah. You know, with people being very serious. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court decision just came in. The Supreme Court decision. The Supreme Court. John Kerry reporting uh, for duty. Justice Alito. <laughs> just an actor. <laughs> and your host. Just an actor. <laughs> But <laughs> movies are so dreadfully serious. So frightfully serious. That when, when you're a young person like ourselves, where we're just like, come on, and can't everyone lighten up and be funny? You know, you're just delighted by people acting silly. Yeah, because it's uh, you're listening to grown-ups talk, and it's boring. They talk about the weather. Yeah. Exactly. And you want to see somebody clown around up there. <laughs> now, the, the one adult that talks about the weather that's funny is Dallas Rains. Of course. Here in Los Angeles. I forecast. I don't love him. I love him. We're both doing <laughs> the, the thing fist, you can't see. The fist pump. <laughs> he, what he does is Dallas Rains. Dallas Rains is a local you, KABC weatherman. Yeah, and he's telling you, I'm going to talk about the weather later. These are like three or three or five second promos yeah. for the news that here's some. Here's some, I'm teasing weather topics I'm going to be discussing. Which, by the way, in <laughs> Los Angeles, how is that a tease for, oh man, I got to catch that weather? Yeah. You know, it's right? like... Shouldn't shouldn't they be teases about like you know disaster just happens in whatever. disaster teases <laughs> disaster teases <laughs> disaster teases. So then at the end when he says at eleven, my he, seven day forecast. He reaches out with at his 11. hand. He grabs some air. He grabs nine, makes a yeah. fist and turns it around and shakes it at the camera and shakes it uh, <laughs> like like I got you air triumph. <laughs> You're not gonna escape the fist of Dallas. Invictus. <laughs> Six Semper Tyrannus. <laughs> Damn, Dallas Reigns. Damn, Dallas Reigns. He's a good looking man. He's, for what he is, which is a man, he's good looking. <laughs> You're right. Dallas Reigns. Damn, Dallas Reigns, Daniel. Damn. 
What do you? Yeah, uh, damn, take us through Daniel. the damn Daniel. Back at it again with the white fans. <laughs> what? Why were you doing that? <laughs> just, was that was, on an episode? I don't remember. I think so. Damn, it was Daniel. John John Hurt doing <laughs> da, damn da, Daniel. damn Daniel. Back at it again, Back at it again with the white fans. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh. I don't even know if I've ever seen the original Damn Daniel video. Damn Daniel. But that makes me laugh. Damn I know what it is Daniel. because I'm Damn plugged in to popular Daniel. culture. Damn Daniel. Back at it again with the white vans. Yeah. Wet, wet weather forecast. My seven day series at 11. It's weird that there's so many clips of him. <laughs> really? <laughs> of this weatherman. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. What, what are they clips of? Describe some of these clips. It is honestly like, here's one, latest weather with Dallas Rains. That was posted a year ago. Why would someone post the weather? Well, it's like the the, the website, I guess the ABC7 website posts them, but then they just you leave gotta, them up. Yeah, delete these. <laughs> Come on. It's the, eating up your bandwidth. Uh, bandwidth is a precious commod. This was Dallas Rains 30th anniversary forecasting accurate weather for Southern California. His 30th anniversary forecast. 30th anniversary forecast. What did he do? Did he do special weather? I think he did special anniversary weather, yeah. <laughs> hey. Anniversary show! This is the Happy anniversary, anniversary to you! <laughs> it's perfect. Happy anniversary to me! <laughs> Dallas Rains praising God for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that I want to hear. Can you play some of that? Yes, hallelujah. FSU, some hey, university. Hey, FSU. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, somebody posted something called Funny Weatherman. Oh, and they just saw him and was like, that's a funny weatherman. Oh, and he man. does a lot of different hand gestures. A lot of fist pumps. It's almost like the... It is a three-part gesture. Three-part gesture. One part. He points. <laughs> then he puts his all his fingers out. Okay, points. Then he does the fist. Points. Points, then flat hands. points with one finger, flat hand, and then the fist. Then the fist. Yeah. Do you remember Cesar Romero in Ocean's Eleven? Didn't didn't we see that together? Yes. I'm going to marry his mama. What's your relationship to Jimmy Foster? I'm going to marry his mama. And he, and he does s- the flat hands and snaps he with it. Snaps somehow. Yeah, it's a snaps weird. Snaps and does the does the flat, the flat hand. hand. So yeah. Everyone knows what we mean by the flat hand. <laughs> That's palm down. Palm down. Ass up. That's the way we <laughs> like <right>? to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the flat hand, obviously. Cesar Romero hand. does it. Do you remember when C.J. Of- Craig did the flat hand in the office? The no. West Wing? What did she? Everyone do? gathered around. Oh yes. CJ's doing the flat hand. The flat hand. <laughs> oh, the flat hand. Oh, my greatest ah, ambition is to ah. do something as good as the jackal. You why don't you just do the jackal? I should just do the jackal. Did you hear Scott Arnold doing the jackal? You should do. You should just do it and put it on YouTube. Just you in an office. Just me doing the lip syncing to the jackal. <laughs> I mean, barely any I've movement. I've never even heard that song, the jackal. I never had either. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about uh, the jackal. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that cleared up. Hope that clears Go it up. Go fuck yourself. The jackal. Those two. Those two. Something about them when they get together. It was murder. <laughs> it was murder. <laughs> More old references. <laughs> older, 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 older. Kids, People are shouting. That was about heart. That was a reference to Heart to Heart, <laughs> which was a TV show about two wealthy people yep. who solved crimes in they their were spare married. time. They were they were, married. Yeah, they're a married couple. Named the Hearts. Mm-hmm. That's my boss, Mr. H. He's quite a guy. He's quite a guy. Robert Wagner, right? Yeah, Robert Wagner. Who would say powers. stuff like, Max, is that your tie or did you throw up on your shirt? He was rude he to his servants. He was just a rude guy. Rude to servants. Yeah. And their, their uh, you know, servant was this guy, Max, who was mm-hmm. a senior was he citizen. a servant or just a friend who, like, hung out with no, them on the he payroll? No, he was, like, their butler or something. Oh, he, like, drove them and stuff. <laughs> that, that was a bold TV move to hire a guy who was clearly going to drop dead any moment. <laughs> We're going to make him a major character. Did he drop, drop dead in the middle of the filming? I think he, he made it. It was a coach situation. I think he made it the whole run of Did the he? show. Wow. I Sometimes so. I think about that when you like, you know, they're like, "Oh my God, we got this amazing actor. He's yeah. ninety. 
Mm, it was like Night Court went through two old ladies before they were yeah. like, let's get let's someone, get someone young. young. Let's get someone, someone young. young. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven went to UTA. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, right. you know what people said when the Entourage movie came out? Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Mr. Belvedere style. Oh, no. What's the difference between an employee and a servant? Is it they live with you? I think so, yeah. I th- well, I think an employee is not doing things for you personally. Okay. They have a job that they fulfill. A task. But a servant Just is, like does ser- anything? is literally serving you. Oh, man, I want one so bad. Oh, of course I do too, Scott. I look at I look at that Downton Abbey and I'm like, that's the way to do it, brother. Downtown. That's I gotta I gotta do it. I gotta live that way. To have like twenty people living down yeah. in your basement. They're afraid of you. Oh, and they think that. you're a god. Yeah. You, so, like somebody else speaks up and like they gossip about you, and then there's like the head dude is like, You watch your mouth. Oh, man. That man is rich. I think <laughs> I think you'd be a good head dude. No, I wanna be the Nah. You're gonna be the head dude. Down below. Oh. You're, it'll be great. You're at the top of that food chain. Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm in the bottom of the food chain up up top. I wanted to be the... What? I'm You're the upstairs? Bottom. Yeah, I'm upstairs. Who but are I'm you a... up there? Uh, I'm like the... Uh, I'm the, the stable boy who married the... Uh, the chauffeur who married the, you know, like yeah. I, I used to be at the bottom too with you, but right? Then, but then I'm then I've married someone. How do you how do you how do we treat each other when you come downstairs? Well, you have to afford me the respect I deserve. I'm part of the family. <laughs> be my guest. Thank you for listening to Comedy Bang Bang for Put another week. Put my manners week. to the test. <laughs> All right. By the way, Paul F. Tompkins here <laughs> has uh, turned into a talking spoon this in the time sucks. between the last episode. This is not great. <laughs> because, I mean, first of all, the spoon, would you agree that the spoon is the least used item of uh, cutlery? Oh, I wish I could say that's true. Really? I People are using me to stir and scoop all manner of things. <laughs> But that is primarily a spoon's bailiwick, is it not? Well, yes, but I've never been a spoon before. (laughs) How did this happen to you? Uh, I was doing cocaine with a genie. (laughs) (laughs) Just one of those crazy things. I made fun of his Coke spoon and he Uh, turned me into one. Oh, no. Wait, so you're a Coke spoon? I'm a big Coke spoon. Oh, okay. So the genie was very big. When you say all manner of things, you primarily mean cocaine. Yeah. (laughs) Meow. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. Did that genie just turn you into a cat? Genie! <laughs> How great was I Dream of Genie? The creators of that realized that uh, the the word genie mm-hmm. was uh, a uh, homonym yeah. for the name genie. Yeah. That's a show. It's perfect. Great show. And also very little, other than the original finding of the genie bottle. How did very they find it? I his, don't recall. Very little of his career had to do with space. He was mostly <laughs> just in the Air Force and worked at an office. <laughs> if he was an astronaut, though, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Did he travel to the moon and beyond? Or I don't remember if... And back? I don't remember if he traveled to the moon, beyond, and back, or if he... It was a like a, a flight that was aborted. Like, I remember in the opening mm. animation, his space capsule, mm. it uh, falls down on an island. Oh, that's right. And that's where right. he discovers the bottle. So he's a failed astronaut. Yeah, I guess so. Who never made it out into space, yeah. instead got onto an island. Yeah. Finds Instead, a, he got onto an island, <laughs> which anyone could do. You I don't guess, have to be an astronaut to do that. I mean, you know, uh, in one way, it's an efficient way of travel. If you need to get to that island, go out, go out into space. and then, But much like the incompetent Gilligan, he did not go there on purpose. That is true. I feel like any shows about islands, people go there by mistake. Gilligan's Island, Lost. Right. The only one I can think of where people went there on purpose is Fantasy Island. <laughs> yeah. But come on, can you think of another show where it's like, watch these characters as they vacation on Hawaii? <laughs> Scott, can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking Scott, imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Oh no, the genie turned us into babies. Oh no, baby genie, no baby. No baby genie. No baby baby. Scott, I'd like to introduce a new... Uh, tradition here. I'd like to read 
the call sheet order for bajillion dollar properties. <laughs> okay. Number You know how interested I am in call sheets. Now call sheets I know. if you don't know what these are, the this is the uh, bit of information that goes out to every person working on the crew and every actor to let you know what is happening the next day mm-hmm. and the actors are listed in order of importance That's correct. to the production. That's right. So uh, when you have a show like I did, you're number one on the call sheet That's right. for uh, the entire time. So on bajillion dollar properties, no, this, this is no different. This is the way no we No different things. than any – why would you do no, something different for a show a like show bajillion dollar exactly. properties? Eighth most important. Eighth most important. Eugene Cordero. Okay. Well, he was not one of the original cast members. That's right. He came in a little later, so I understand that. That's right. Seventh most important. Okay. This is where we get down to it. Dan Adut. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sixth most you important. You think they would go in alphabetical order. You think, <laughs> but, but they sure didn't. Maybe reverse alphabetical order. No, they went in order of importance. Sixth most important, Ryan Gall. <laughs> He's number six. <laughs> Fifth most important, Drew Tarver. Wow. Incredible. Inc- incredible. Fourth most important, Mandel Mon. Really? Yeah. Okay. Third most important, Uh huh. Tim Baltz. Huh. Okay. Second most important. Okay, we only have two left as, as, uh, as uh, yeah, and I believe, okay, I think I know who this will be. Tawny Newsom. Tawny Newsom, number two. Congratulations to her. And most important. Paul F. Tompkins. Number one on the call sheet. Number one on the call sheet. Number one in our hearts. Number one with a bullet. <laughs> I played on a, a video games on a show with Tim Baltz. Mm, fun. We played GoldenEye together. Isn't he number six on the call sheet or number uh, No, he's, he's higher up there. He's maybe Ryan four. Ryan Gall's number six. Okay. He's four. He's, he's four. No, Gump. Mandel Mon is number four. Oh, he's three. Tim is number three. Yeah. Tony's number two. And then guess who's at number one? Number one. I think it was in reverse order of them being uh, hired. Oh, shit. <laughs> Don't tell them that. You can't tell them. I mean, they have a general. Dan knows he was hired first. It, what? Dan knows he was hired first. I think he does because he never lets anyone I've, forget it. Hopefully there there may be some news about that this year. I'm hoping uh, in the, uh, 2019. 2019, 19. No, 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 19. The Quare. Go. 2019. Go the Makes the night a Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Folks, talking we're about talking about bajillion dollar properties. properties. Um, but we're just talking about the uh, order on the call sheet that all the actors are, are on. And, Which is extremely uh, important. Extre- and they all fight about it all the time. Well, I... What I, I'm very proud of us for not fighting about it and recognizing the most important thing is that I'm number one. That's right. You are number one. Narciss, Narcissus, right? This was uh-huh. a guy. Here's this guy. He was so all about himself. That they were like, we're going to name this after you. Still to this day, people are like, you know what you remind me of? Narcissus. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much you talk about yourself. <laughs> what if that was the way we said it to people? You know who you remind <laughs> you know me of? Remind me of this guy, Narcissus. Narcissus. <laughs> he uh, looked at his own reflection in the pond or whatever. Fell in love with that shit. Yeah, then he opened his mouth, the bone fell out. And he, someone booted him in the butt and he fell in the pond. Yeah, he's going to get two bones and he only had the one. Bye, dum dum. <laughs> All right, let's go to a break. Hey, everyone. Scott Ackerman here. And if you're like me, you're sitting around with probably 25 to 50 great website ideas. Probably. Yeah. Probably. (laughs) Who's that guy? (laughs) The New Year chicken is here. Chicken man. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. If you're just uh, listening to the show for the first time, that is one of our regular characters. And, uh, he's not a rooster man. He's no. a female chicken who is a man. He's a New Year chicken. Ah, New Year. <laughs> By the way, Squarespace is a do-it-yourself website builder that allows you to make a website or a blog in just a few minutes. My wife, she did one using Squarespace, so you know it's good. You know what? Enough talking about it. Go to squarespace.com slash bangbang to start your free trial, no credit card required. And then... 
Once you get on there and you're going to want to decide to purchase it, click enter an offer code below the pricing at checkout to enter the offer code hot dog. Get a job. Da, 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 da. Hey, welcome back. It's Comedy Bang Bang. We're, uh, Paul and I, we're doing what we do every commercial break, which is sing Sean on Us. We sing Get a Job in its entirety <laughs> yep. during every break. Every break. And this one ended a little sooner than we expected. Yeah, so sorry. So sorry. Sorry about that. Paul, we got to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Pop music. Pop music. Talk about Um, We got to talk about something that we've talked about several years in a row here. Mm. We got to talk about a little something called the Mr. Microphone <laughs> toy. Uh, when, when I realized we had somehow inadvertently hit upon our own Christmas tradition by merely by chance talking about the Mr. Microphone commercial on two consecutive <laughs> best of episodes, I realized we had to keep it going. Here's what it stems from. Uh, there is a phrase in these commercials. Paul, maybe you want to say exactly what it is. The phrase is, <clears throat> hey, good looking, we'll be back to pick you up later. Hey, good looking, we'll be back to pick you up later. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll, sometimes we'll. What they promised you was that you would be able to Walk by someone listening to the radio, turn on your microphone, usurp the very airwaves it's themselves, and hijack, like a pirate radio station, hijack their radio and talk directly to these people who would be so surprised and not afraid of you mm -mm. and not thrown by this that they would fall into your arms and fall in love with you. They Is that would, right, Paul? They would be... Delighted. They would be. Del they would love that. They would say, "Finally, someone has harnessed this technology yes. for F good." Finally, I've been waiting for someone to do this. Someone to talk to me via my radio. That is the promise of Mister Microphone, and I had imagined in my mind a situation where I would be throwing my voice like a ventriloquist, a Mister Microphone ventriloquist, into other people's radios. <laughs> Rod, Todd, this is God. Or like a terrifying big brother <laughs> who sure. controlled all methods of communication. Head. Must love him. Sure, certainly. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> yes. Damn, 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 damn. Back at it again. Back at it again with the white vans. <laughs> <laughs> in previous years, and this comes up, we'll say, hey, good looking, I'll be back to pick you up later. Or, mm -hmm. hey, good looking, we'll be back to pick you up later. And that just came up two different years, and then we broke down the commercial <laughs> and our problems with it. Yeah. Now, I have not seen this commercial in 30 years. Mm -hmm. It has just been seared into my brain. Me too. I had been watching this commercial for years and years, and I had- Because they did use the same commercial for a very long time. For a very long time. And- the situations were at a party. Hey, I'm going to get on the microphone. Everyone's going to be like, whoa, you got a microphone in your house? Yeah. Which is not typical house <laughs> whoa. accoutrement. Yeah. No, it's not. You Sinks. We, Everyone's got those. Sure. Let's, wind, let's wind, run it down. Wind, Toilets? Wind. Toilets. Windows. <laughs> I hope you have a door. Kitchen counter. Floors? I hope so. I Otherwise, hope so. you're going to the center of the earth, my dear boy. Silverware drawer? They said the civil rights drawer. Civil rights drawer where you <laughs> <laughs> you celebrate Loving Day by sure. pulling out your marriage <laughs> certificate. Your junk drawer. Junk drawer. Junk drawer. Toilets. Did I mention toilets? You did. Of course. You're very fond of them. I love them. Stairs sometimes. Stairs sometimes. So we're now we're on to things that some homes have. <laughs> okay. Backyard. Backyard. Front yard. All around the house. Uh, rooftop pool. <laughs> <laughs> Wet bar. <laughs> sure. These are things every home has. But microphone? Uh -oh. Nagada. Not in those days. Nagada. Nagada. Not in those days. Nagada. Never said it. Um, so that's very impressive. Uh, walking down the street, that's very impressive. But the one that, that stuck out... In Paul and I, uh, the minds of two young boys such as Paul and I, mm -hmm. was where a gentleman, and I think he was a gentleman. I think he was a gentleman. He was a perfect gentleman. He was a perfect gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> In this situation, he acted like a perfect gentleman. He was gallant. 
<laughs> Respectful. Mm. Chivalrous. Of course, of course. A perfect gentleman. A perfect gentleman. Driving like in a Jeep, an open-faced Jeep. An open-faced Jeep. <laughs> oh, my God. Excuse me, may I order an open-faced Jeep? Oh, my God. Um, do you remember that episode of MASH where Klinger ate the Jeep? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Open-faced. <laughs> open-faced, of course. In my, in my... My recollection of it is it's a Jeep. I think you're saying your rectum. <laughs> my rectum. In my rectum, it's a Jeep. In my rectum is a Jeep. Um, no, my recollection is that uh, the, the gentleman was in a Jeep, something without a top, uh, certainly a convertible. Mm. He pulled. He saw two women walking on the sidewalk. I'm not going to say down the street. Uh, Just the other day. And, and in my recollection, they were wearing swimsuits. Is that yours as well? Scott, can I tell you? Hmm. My recollection has changed. What? Yes. Since the very last time we talked about this, one year ago? Yes. Here's what I see now in my mind. Mm. Is this because you've watched the commercial in question so many times? I, I think it must be. It may be have, have influenced this a little but bit. But I'm retreating to my memory palace. Mm. And what I see there is two gentlemen in a convertible. Convertible. We are seeing the back of the car. Mm. One gentleman who is holding the Mr. Microphone, and he is Is he a, driving or no, is he the passenger? He's a passenger, and he is a perfect gentleman. But just a perfect gentleman. <laughs> he is turning around facing the camera. Facing the camera, yes. And saying into Monsieur Le Microphone. Mm, la la. Hey, good looking. We'll be back, back to, to pick, pick you, you up, up later. later. And this is what – I would imagine is that I would be in a situation where I would buy a Mr. Microphone. I would find some good looking women listening to their radios yeah. and I would turn on my microphone and take over their radio. That's right. And out of their radio, it would, they would hear my voice and I would say, hey, your, your message. My <laughs> message. And I'd be on message <laughs> and on brand by saying, Hey, good looking. I'll be back to pick you up later. Sure. And I was very disappointed when I got a Mr. Microphone mm -hmm. that it only broadcast – it does not broadcast to random radio signals. That would be insane. Yeah. If you could usurp anyone's radio at any time. It's not Mr. Pirate Microphone. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not some sort of Christian Slater pump up the volume situation right. with pirate radio. No. One had <clears throat> to turn their radio to a specific – Frequency on the radio dial, normally very, very low, some like 86.9, something that no one would be listening to. Because there's nothing there. There's nothing there, and that's why they pick it. It is yeah. attuned to that frequency. Instead, pick 102.7 or something like that, something, you know, KISS FM, something everyone is listening to. But no, they pick it very low on the frequency. Yeah. So it's like fun if you tune your own radio to it. Then you have a little loudspeaker. Then you have a loudspeaker. The end. Or if you play, you want to put it in another room like if you're here's right. how you think when you're a kid right i'll sure. put it in the other room sure and then i'll pretend like i'm a news announcer like right uh, aliens have landed uh. people of earth this is bartron commander of the martian invasion force your planet is in our hands or i'll make fart sounds when someone sits down like <laughs> but that's the only Big difference in our childhood. That's the only fun to be had with this thing. Yeah. You can't do the hey good look and I'll be back to pick you up later What scam. about the guy who was dancing down the street uh, singing jingle bells? Ah, uh, this motherfucker. Holding his radio. No attaching wires, so you're free to move around. <laughs> it's like we need we need to sing a song. It's got to be in the public domain though. Yeah, what do we got? How, how about, about jingle bells? How about how about this melody? Da 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 <laughs> da da da. da, da. Wait, not any other note? Just the one. Okay, yeah, I'll do it. I blame the actor in the commercial, too. I blame all of them. Sure. They should not have agreed to be in it. it they're all, none of them. They're all complicit. Playing. They're all complicit. They're all complicit. Uh -huh. I don't want to hear. I was just following orders. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've talked about my disappointment with the product two years in a row, and it came to my attention through sharp-eared listeners mm. That the com bad, bads. <laughs> that the commercial does not imply that you would be throwing your voice into another radio. Yeah, it implies that you would have your own radio and turn it up so loudly that when you said, "Hey, good look," and I'll be back to pick you up later. And Steph Curry, for what are you doing, Cody? 
This is the literally 10th time you have interrupted our show by watching something on the computer while you are supposed it's, to be recording the it's, show. It's sort of astonishing that you still have a job here. I, You're one of our oldest employees, <laughs> and I love you. This is your most reliable trait, by the way. This is, is that, something that you do. <laughs> I cannot fathom it. I cannot fathom. I'm right in the middle of one of our cherished... <laughs> Christmas traditions. Cody, people look forward to this all year long. All year long. And here I am in the middle of it. People I'm have a- just gotten their families gathered around. <laughs> around the their hearth. Laptop. I'm about to make a mea culpa <laughs> apology. This and this has been a long time coming. Oh, three years in the making. Yes. And now I have to hear about Steph Curry? <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? I am so sorry. Thank you. That's. I mean, that's a start. That's a start. <laughs> and it may be, quite honestly, a finish. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I do not have the power to fire you. <laughs> full, full disclosure, <laughs> no one in the room has power to fire Cody. <laughs> that would explain a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it. one can only control one's own radio, and one hopes that one has a loud enough radio. As scripture tells us. <laughs> that one can turn it up loud enough to broadcast one's own voice to a good-looking woman Mm -hmm. as one passes by one, and that would be so distracting to them that they would look (laughs) up. So distracting. One would think that they would have their own radios that they're listening to and not hear something like this, although when you are listening to the radio, one should be attuned to the noises around them, especially if there are cars about. Yeah, if you're walking around carrying a radio... (laughs) <laughs> holding it right up to your ear. Sure. As you, you as pop culture in as the 80s and, in 70s, and 70s, showed 70s showed us. 70s showed us. A lot of people would do this. A lot of people would do this. You right must, up to the ear. It's your responsibility to be alert and aware of your surroundings. With one ear. With one ear. for car sounds. So. And even if you're indoors, look, there are a lot of news stories every year about cars crashing into mini marts. Yeah. Houses. Yeah. I saw straight out of Compton. Those guys. Very first scene. Boom. Boom. Right in the living room. So, now, can you imagine you're in your living room, you're listening to your radio, you're not paying attention because you think, oh, I'm in my house. I'm in my house. Of course, a car is not going to come crashing that's through. That's what the- you have to pay attention to the most. <laughs> the most. Because that's what you least expect it. <laughs> One ear, always for car always sounds. Always for car sounds. Bless, so then what? You're going to let yourself be manslaughtered? And then Jessica Fletcher has to come in on her goddamn bike? <laughs> Vehicular manslaughter, she wrote. Oh, Oh, not this Christmas. So look, so what happened was- Here it comes, the big moment everyone's been waiting for. I I got this news. I heard, hey, you're wrong about this commercial, which is seared into your brain. Mm Mm-hmm. My brain, specifically. I've watched my this, brain. I've watched so many times. I've watched this commercial, and that was my impression of the Mister Microphone. Mm-hmm. I've come to realize that no. Uh, when you watch the commercial, I pulled up the actual commercial, and I think this cannot be the version that I watched so many times. Here's the version that I remember that's seared okay. into my brain. Okay, is there is a young lady walking down the street. There are three guys in a convertible. They have a Mr. Microphone. The one guy says, through via his car radio, right. hey, good looking, we'll be back to pick you up later. Okay. Now, see, that is the version in my brain, too. But the only one, the original, that is online. There are two commercials that I found online. The only one that features a car of gentlemen <laughs> saying that, they never show the women. They never show the women. You just see these three assholes? You just see these going, three hey, assholes. Going, hey, good looking, it. we'll be back to make you up later. Yes. And I thought to myself, can that be possible that we are remembering women, beautiful women walking down the street and then this, and then them being a reaction? But maybe. Here's what's very, I think, a, a comfort. Mm-hmm. How progressive that commercial was back then. <laughs> to not show. Not show the gender. <laughs> the gender. They didn't show the gender of the person. Oh, that that's was true. the good looking one. <laughs> Maybe you're right. It could be a man, it could, be, could be a woman. That's true. That is that is a great So great it point. allowed you to put yourself in, if I may, the driver's seat. <laughs> right. What if you were that man with the Mr. Microphone? Who would who who's who, the good looking person you're seeing? Who you know, these days it's anything. Is it a table? You know? It's like who well, knows what people are in love with these days. I don't know. I don't think they anyway. were yelling at a table. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's going antiquing. <laughs> he's like 
good looking. I'll be back to pick you up later. Like people who put their stuff by the <laughs> yeah, side. Yeah, it's a garage the sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could be saying it to like two potted plants that are sitting there. These, he could be talking to the cameraman. He could. That's <laughs> any. And God damn it, I bet he is. Uh, this is the version that is the most famous version, the one that that is out there. But Paul and I, and and maybe you've changed your tune on this, but somehow in my recollection of this commercial, I've seen the women. I believe the women and are in, my, in this commercial. And in mind, t- me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Now, when we started talking about this, we it was several years ago, we talked about it on the best ofs. We mentioned this commercial and and didn't even think to look it up. Really, until like maybe last what year or the, the year need? before. What was, was the need? We remember this we commercial. We remembered the commercial. We remembered it. Now, since then, we've been talking about it so many years that we looked it up and we were shocked, nay, dismayed to find. Nay, horrified. That the, the example of this commercial that is currently on the internet and indeed YouTube, these women are nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. It's like a... a, a, a it's like a reverse uh, God flit, Godless on Netflix. I was Get it together. Godflix. What are you trying to say? I'm having a hard time. Godflix. Godflix. That's, you know what? If I were a Christian, instead of Netflix, where there's so much filth, I'd love Godflix. <laughs> That's a good business. So we, we – and we've talked about this where we, we, we are sure, or at least I am sure, there is a version of this commercial out there that was the second version of the – the commercial has gone through several versions yes. over the years. Yes, That there is a version out there that uh, has the women – that we see the women's reactions and they're delighted by this man. I, I, yeah. ch- I choose Be- – Because it is delightful. I choose to believe that. Yeah. Now, here's what has happened. Was it this year that it's happened, or was it the previous year? It was the previous year. Ever since we oh, talked wow. about this on the show, all people do now, and it and to be honest, some people are doing it now because they know it irritates us, yes. and they and they are trying to poke. And what's us funnier than irritating people that yeah. you admire, or if not admire, at least you that know, you enjoy get free it. entertainment yeah. from. But but it it. Also happens at least every couple of weeks yeah. where it's someone doing it genuinely. Yeah. They will send us a most times a still mm-hmm. of a popular cartoon program. I don't even want to say the name. I don't want to, but I'm going to. Oh, okay. The Simpsons. Yeah. And they say, Hey, you're thinking of this Simpsons episode. And where you see the women, it was a parody of this commercial. They say, hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. And you see the women in this commercial. Hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. (laughs) He's in for some loving. And our point is, no, we're not. Yeah. No, we're not. (laughs) We're thinking of a filmed live action, real life human being, not drawn. Yes. Commercial. Yeah. Because that's the one we remembered from childhood, not The Simpsons. And by the way, The Simpsons obviously remembers it because they drew it in their parody. This is the point. This is Sparta! (laughs) Please don't send us The Simpsons thing anymore. I know we're in for another now month of it. Yeah, why are we talking about this? That was a mistake. It's It's a Christmas tradition. People, people love to hear us talk about Mr. Microphone. Mm-hmm. And I don't want this to drive a wedge between us. Okay, I hope not. I don't think I was under the impression that you could just hijack people's I think sound. we've talked about this. Yeah. This is maybe my issue. It might be your issue. Uh, the, the main reason, for me, so for me, that's not the main reason to dislike Mr. Microphone. The main reason is it's shitty. <laughs> it is a shitty product. <laughs> Plus, it's like just buy a regular microphone and an amp. Yeah, kids. You can't you can't afford an amp? <laughs> Save your paper route money. Seriously, or go like, you know, do you can't afford an amp. Just staff you can't afford up, an amp? Just staff up on a sitcom. God. <laughs> if you need some extra money. Hey, just go to Harvard. Work in the lampoon. <laughs> End up writing for The Simpsons to toy. Yes. It's as easy before as before you buy. move on to something else. Anyway, there I I think there has to be a a later version of this commercial where you see the women. I think because here and I've talk- I can see it in my mind very clearly. I can too. But the version that I saw from 1978 is so old and shitty 
that it can't be the version that we saw so many times as a kid. Can it? Why? It's, Why can't it be? It starts off, it looks It looks so bad. Mm-hmm. It starts off with two just dopes going, hey, what do you got there? Oh, a Mr. Microphone. Oh, I heard of that. It's so bad. Here's all I remember mm-hmm. is I, the, the guys in the car and the ladies who right. apparently did not exist. Right. And... The guy with his radio on his shoulder who is walking down the street singing Jingle Bells. An African-American gentleman sure. who's that. like dancing with his ghetto blaster next to his ear and singing into a microphone. Yes. I think this – I see, I think there must be a version from 1983 or so that upgraded all of these scenes. I was like, this can't be the commercial that I've seen. So I did a little research and I found a, a uh, version from 1981 or two. Mm-hmm which upgrades the look of the commercial considerably. It looks like a professional commercial again. Right. But the <laughs> hey, good look, again. the hey, good looking, I'll be back to pick you up later, is said by a child on a bike. Hey, good looking, I'll be back to pick you up later. Now, I think then that's a reference to the original iconic commercial. And they were yes. having some fun with it. They're having some fun where they were saying like, oh, even kids can be. Even kids want to fuck. <laughs> And that's what we want to say. Even kids want to fuck. So let them. Let them, let moms. The, let kids fuck each other. What if kids just, what if it was like one year on January 1st, 2017, every elementary school. This is a purge scenario? Yeah, this is a purge. It's not even a purge scenario, but it's like on January 1st, everyone said, look, we know it's New Year's Day. Get your kids in school. <laughs> I know they traditionally have it off on January 1st. Right. Get everyone come to the school because we have something important to say. <laughs> and every single principal of every single elementary school said, guys, it's no longer, we're not going to look down on you guys anymore. In fact, we encourage you, all of you kids fuck each other <laughs> all the time. All of you small children, <laughs> you are free to be sexually You're, active. Do whatever you want. We're not, there are no rules anymore. It, but look, the only rule is, it's got to be consensual. It's got to be consensual, of course. <laughs> and have fun. And have fun. <laughs> what do you think would happen? What do I think? <laughs> what happened? And, and how would they all like, coordinate Like, would the parents this? all go along with it? Yeah, like, they all. Well, if all the schools got together and said, <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, oh, the other weird Ooh, part about this. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. The other strange part about this second Mr. Microphone commercial is there is a section where, uh, It is a group of uh, Hispanic people Mm. sitting around, and it says, Senor Microfono es numero uno. (laughs) (laughs) Very weird. And do they, are they then singing a song in Spanish? They're not, they're like going, yay, into their own, or they're going, I don't know. They're just cheering for the Mr. Microphone. Yeah, for the Mr. Microphone. And then there's another scene Mm -hmm. where a, 12-year-old girl is at her birthday party, and she has a stack of presents, and she's opened 10 of them, and nine are Mr. Microphones. And she opens another one and goes, another Mr. Microphone! Yay! And everyone cheers. <laughs> That's, that, I think at that point, the makers of Mr. Microphone were being- <laughs> They're stretching uh, the truth uh, a wee on. little bit. Come on, guys. A wee little bit. Come on, guys. Wow. <laughs> Anything, now, do you have anything to add to the Mr. Microphone mythos? I, I, I was obsessed with it as a child. Never had sure. one. Never had one, yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I ever saw one in person. I don't think I had, by the way, the actual legit Ronco Mr. Microphone. I believe I had – my sister, I believe, got a Barbie version. Mm. And uh, I was like, oh, boy, one of these that I have coveted for so long so I could tell women everywhere that I was going to pick them up later. <laughs> <laughs> so that you'll never know the powers of the real Mr. Microphone. I, d- I don't know what radius it would broadcast to. There's so much is probably unsafe. miles. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, I assume. I mean, I'd love to wonder, having never experienced I mean, it. There, yeah, that's true. I, d- I want to look up those commercials because I – I have not. I also have not seen them in thirty years. You'd be I, shocked at how bad the original <laughs> one is. These kids are having a fabulous time with Mr. Microphone, the cordless microphone that actually puts your voice on the radio. It is so <laughs> shoddily made. I got one. 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 I got a Mr. Microphone, and I love it. There has to be a version from later on in the mid '80s that we watched. I don't know. There has to be. I pray. I pray there was.
This is my prayer. <laughs> All right. Well, we did it. We talked about it. <laughs> Can I tell you another misleading one? Please. For me as a child, more misleading than okay. the Mr. Microphone. Okay. There was a toy called Big Track. Big Track. It was like a futuristic tank kind mm. of thing. And it was, it was battery power, and the idea was – it had a keypad that you could program it to do different moves and stuff. Okay. So you could program a a sort of uh, course for it to follow. Okay. And on the commercial, the kid is playing with it, and he like boop beep pop 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 presses on the keypad, and then big track like goes around. It starts to go down. Like it looks like it's going to go down some stairs, but then it like oh backs up, turns around, goes Ooh. the other way. Backs up, turns like, around, stops. goes the other way. <laughs> That's right. That was you remember the song, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, like at one point, it goes by the f- that family cat, and then it turns and shoots a laser at the cat. Whoa! Which was just like a, li- a, little, a little light, light flashed, and then there was Ooh. but a great noise, like and, 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 and the cat like jumped out of the way. I think the cat just sat there. Mm. Yeah, but it sounds then, like a cat. When you actually got the toy, which I did. And I was right. thrilled to the gills to get oh, this thing. Oh, my goodness. There's, you can't figure, it takes so much trial and error to figure out the distance. Uh, like, oh, you have to just, pre-program everything? Yeah, you pre-program oh, everything. Oh, man. Meanwhile, your cat is sitting there going, well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my scene. <laughs> get back, jump back, turn the other way. Well, that's what I call the big track today. <laughs> Paul F. Tompkins here. I direct traffic sometimes, <laughs> and I like to have fun with it. So I dance Some around. Steven I come Soderberg up with type here. Stylized. Directing traffic. <laughs> oh, why? Why? Why, why me? Why, why anybody? <laughs> um, sorry do you to think, Do you think yeah. that makes Nancy Kerrigan a very selfless person, <laughs> that when she was hit in the knee, she says, why me? Then she immediately says, why anybody? <laughs> Did she? I, yeah. don't, I don't know this. Yeah. I haven't seen the clip. Was it on camera? It was on camera, yeah. Why he me? He did this on camera? Why anybody? Well, the aftermath was captured on camera. <laughs> He'd like call a press conference. <laughs> so uh, if uh, without further ado, I would like to go ahead and hit this girl in the <gasps> Oh my God. Okay. So it wasn't on camera. This is just her press conference that she said, why me? Why anybody? This was- I don't recall was this. Right after- This is 25 years ago, right? Right at- Oh, is it? That's <laughs> crazy. So- I right after she got hit, there were cameras. Mm-hmm. So there, there must have been some press event that was going okay. on. And so somebody had – because this is pre-camera uh, phone. Right. So this was like an actual news camera right. that's capturing this. And she's on the ground. She's holding her knee. And she's crying in pain, <sighs> saying, why me? Why, why anybody? anybody? <laughs> well, it's good that she, you know, thinks globally, acts why? locally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she know. acted locally and had that – she had Jeff Gululi assassinated. <laughs> What a t- what a weird story that is. Really weird. It? <laughs> really, really weird. I, I would love to see a TV movie about this. I mean, it's they so must interesting. Have made one. Oh, they probably did. So interesting to go try to break someone's leg because yeah. she's a good skater. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You don't have to wrap a gift for me. And you don't have to put lights on a tree But I've got one request you must not dismiss Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas that's the cruelest thing that you could do. Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. Because I, Tanya, would not joke about you. You can sing a carol in the snow. Gain a bunch of weight and laugh, ho, ho, ho. You can drink 10,000 mugs of Swiss Miss. But please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. 
Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. That's the cruelest thing that you could do. Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. Cause I, Tanya, would not joke about you. I, Tanya, was released a couple of weeks ago, and as of this recording, has an 87% score on the Rotten Tomatoes movie website. That means most of the audiences liked it just fine. There were way worse movies released this year. Justice League, for instance. Maybe make fun of that one. How about Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage? No one wanted that. M. Night Shyamalan split for crying out loud. Baywatch? Come on. Baywatch is better than I, Tanya. Get out of town. So this year, as you gather around the Christmas tree to open presents, just this one time, don't joke about I, Tanya. Why? 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 <laughs> Why me? Why anybody? <laughs> Give a man of snow a carrot nose. Squeeze the baby Jesus' whittle toes. But should you ignore my warning, you'd be remiss. Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. That's the cruelest thing that you could do. Please don't joke about I, Tanya, this Christmas. Cause I, Tanya, would not joke about you. Cause I, Tanya, would not joke about you. If you see Santa Claus in mm-hmm. the department store, sure, it's one of his helpers. Really? Yeah, it's not really him. So if you tug on his beard mm-hmm. and you see it's fake, mm-hmm. he'll tell you that he's one of his helpers yeah. instead of the actual Santa Claus. He has to tell you that. Oh man, yeah. is that like uh, even if his beard is real? Being a member of Kiss, they've ne- they have not toured since the seventies. Why? Because they, they it's they've just put other people into those. Uh, into the ma- into the makeup. Oh, I thought it was because their music is dumb and no one wanted to hear it. <laughs> How dare you? How dare me? How dare me? Two sides of the coin to turn to. Two sides of the coin You're gonna to turn lose. to. Is that a song for real? Yes. Oh, Knights in Service of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they're not doing a good job. <laughs> they are not. They're not recruiting a lot of people these days. <laughs> Do you think Satan's angry? Like, guys, guys, I made you knights. I gave you fame, <laughs> riches, wealth, an ace. You squandered it. I gave you cool makeup to cover up your ugly faces. That's I mean. I c- couldn't do anything to your voices <laughs> other than dub you in Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Relax, Star Child. I'll bend these bars with the powers of my mind. Leave it to me, Star Child. I'll bend these beams with my mind. No powers. <laughs> Guys, we're a million years old. <laughs> if you're a 13 year old, you have no idea what we're talking about. But we have fun. Uh, Paul, oh, that ends. Also, sex is great. So you're going to love it. <laughs> you are. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? I bet they've already had it. It's babies having have. babies. Oh, babies having babies. Ugh, the worst. Babies having babies. Let me tell you about the people involved. People we have. Let me tell you about the people involved. involved. An ace. Uh oh. We're just ordinary human beings. Insufficient dad at the moment, Star Child. <laughs> By the way, give us a grandchild. Please give us Please a give grandchild. Us a grandchild. It was kind of a happy accident. You've heard a of happy accident. You've heard of Happy Madison. I have. Creator of some of the great films of the past right. twenty so, years, such as Happy Gilmore. 
or Billy Madison. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. I think that's how they got their name. Mm, that's not. a bit of a stretch. Maybe. I'm so sorry. But um, Gilmore Girls, of course. Of course. They is, were the creator of the Gilmore Girls. spinoff of ha- Happy Gilmore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were Happy Gilmore's children. That's right. <laughs> The Gilmore yeah, girls. that's right. They were not mother and daughter. They yeah. were sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the secret. If there were, if yeah, it's like Chinatown. Another... She's my sister. She's my daughter. My sister, my daughter. If it had gone another <laughs> season, they would have revealed. It would have been revealed. That they were actually sisters and daughters. She's my sister and my daughter. To Happy yes. Gilmore. Incestuous relationship between Happy Gilmore and Lorelai Gilmore. <laughs> She gives birth to her own sister. Yes, sir. May I do an impression of my favorite moment from the movie Lincoln? <laughs> sure. Uh, where they're- Lincoln. Where uh, Tommy Lee Jones is hurling around the craziest old-timey insults that right. even back then, how could anyone be offended I, by I, them? I, And I like how they all start with like a, will the respected senator from Des Moines yes. realize that? Yes. <laughs> like such preamble on and they're, insults. They're the most they're the most florid, ridiculous things. Slavery! is the only insult to natural law, you fatuous nincompoop. <laughs> Order! And I can't imagine even back then that anyone would be like, uh, this is an outrage that you said this to me. <laughs> right. I mean, this, yeah. you're, we're in front of people. You say that to me? Yeah. And, and, and then everybody looks ridiculous, of course. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> They're all it's wearing like, foppish wigs. Yeah. Uh, but this, and ridiculous so mustachios. Tommy Lee Jones says something to this one guy. You! Are more reptile than man, George. And then the camera zooms in on this guy as he goes, How dare you? <laughs> Crushing How you. How dare you? <laughs> I guess if you are if you're willing to talk that way, <laughs> I could see how you would be insulted by somebody calling you some sort yeah. of a dressed up dog of a dandy doodle. <laughs> <laughs> you think they just drop it for me and go, Hey, shut up, man. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever said "fuck you" so on the properly. floor of the house? Uh, <laughs> well, ever, ever, I mean, has that ever, ever happened? Oh man, in I want to hear it. In the Senate, has anyone ever gone "fuck you"? <laughs> That's a supercut I want to hear. Yeah, all the times "fuck you" has ever been said on the floor. Fuck Trump. Anyway, so uh, there's You're a Swiffer. <laughs> Do you, think somebody, do you think somebody would be offended by that if you called him a Swiffer? If you walked up to a stranger on the street and said, hey, you're a Swiffer, and you walked away, what, what people would go, fuck you, wouldn't they? But then I, I would. But then they would kind of go, what did the guy mean? <laughs> it, would, it would really mess with your head. You'd really start to think about it like, how am I like a Swiffer? You'd like start looking up slang dictionaries and going... <laughs> What, what am I doing? Oh. And then you would start to ascribe its meaning to whatever you're doing, like yeah. whatever fault that you find Is within yourself. Is this the thing that makes me like a Swiffer? Ah, <laughs> oh, fun. You Swiffers out there. Ah, uh, what's up, Swiffers? Oh, by the way, all the fans of the Comedy Bang Bang are Swiffers, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the name on. for them. Right? Henceforth, yes. you're a Swiffer. You're all Swiffers. You know, when I was doing the old... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Forget it. I sneezed. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I sneezed. I'm a human being. I'm sorry. With with a coat on. I'm a human being with a coat on. Do you want me to apologize? Like, uh, what's her name? Lorraine Bracco and Goodfellas? (laughs) Yes, please. (laughs) That scene, you know the scene I'm talking about? Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) Have you ever done a Shakespeare play, Paul? No, I never have. I never well, have. I would love to see you in one. I, really? <laughs> yeah, I would. I think it would be really fun. You you could do like a two month run. What what is there a Shakespeare? Two minutes later. I don't know what any of run. those words mean. Is the problem? Okay. Uh, do you you don't know what Forsooth run means? Forsooth and shit. Oh, those words. The yeah, ones Shakespeare they use. words. Um, thou. Thou just means you. <laughs> Dost. Does. Oh, this is easier than I thought. <laughs> yeah. All you gotta do is and like me thinks. I think. What? It's not, it's <laughs> These are one, easy. It's one to one? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> there, does it solve it? Is there is there a, a part in a Shakespeare play that you were like, that you've ever been like, I w- all things being equal, that would be fun to play that? I mean, I guess like Richard III. That'd be fun. Would be fun. The hunchback of... England, some kind of monster. Uh, Speaking of friend of the show, let's hear some. Uh, let's hear from some friends of the show. Some of our sponsors. What do you say? Let's take one more break. You fooled me. 
Ha ha! We'll be right back after this. <laughs> hey everyone, Scott Ackerman here. I just want to remind you, if you're new to Comedy Bang Bang, if this is the first one you've ever heard, uh, you know we are on the Earwolf Podcasting Network and we have several great shows over there you're going to enjoy. <laughs> have you heard my podcast about spinach? <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, Scott. Sorry, you've caught me in the middle of doing legal stuff. <laughs> it's, always, I, it's always a mess. What kind of legal stuff are you doing? Are you doing oh a will? Oh, my God, I'm doing a will. Doing, <laughs> great. <laughs> Who are you leaving all your money to? Oh, to, to Leona Helmsley's pets, grandchildren. Whatever pets that they, that, that they have that she spawned. she left her money to. She left her money to her pets, and right. if those pets have, have, any have procreated, have yeah. any grandchildren. <laughs> By the I way, give us a grandchild. Please give, Please us, a give grandchild. us a grandchild. <laughs> Look, now that the holiday rush is over, LegalZoom can help you make this a memorable year before all the distractions take hold. What holidays? The New Year's and Did we Christmas? have that already? <laughs> Do, were you What have you been doing the last couple of weeks? I got wrapped up in all this legal stuff. Oh, no. Trying to do it myself. So there's I missed you Christmas. You missed Christmas. Oh. Your wife must be furious oh, with you. Oh my god, my wife. <laughs> my wife I did that like. Oh no! Did you leave her somewhere? She's at, at home, the lawyer's I office. I bet she's at home. Oh gosh! Well, look, make this the year you finally get serious about launching and running your business. Okay. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> look, I hate to sound bossy, but this is something. <laughs> look, I admitted that I don't know what I'm doing. All of your friends have said this about you. Rest oh. a little easier knowing your family's future is squared away with the right estate plan. Okay? Oh, like for when I die. For when you die, leave all your money to your wife, honestly. Not Leona Helmsley's <laughs> No, she, your wife deserves it more than them. Well. Please, or at least our grandchildren. LegalZoom has been helping people like you, worthless people like you, okay. take care of their dreams and responsibilities for more than 16 years. Sounds like 16 and a half, maybe? <sighs> Yeah. Certainly couldn't be 20 because they would say 20. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't been. It's less than 20. Yeah. I need someone to take care of my dreams. <laughs> Do you have a dream catcher? Well, I've been entrusted. I have a dream catcher. Uh, of course, I have entrusting my dreams to Lord Morpheus, the ruler of the dream <laughs> realm. Of course. But still, you're. Oh, and Mr. Sandman. I've been counting on him to bring me a dream. <laughs> right, of course. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Two different guys. Two, yeah, two totally different guys. <laughs> Look, LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they have the resources to keep you on the right path, including advice from their network of independent attorneys. All at, you know those things at the uh, ends of your fingers? Uh, mm, my fingertips? Yeah, your fingertips. All at your fingertips. Oh. LegalZoom is right there at your fingertips. So now here's what I've been doing, mm -hmm. okay? I've been going to the library. Stay there all day, mm -hmm. um, sometimes hiding from when they close. So far, all fine. Coming, coming out at night, mm -hmm. just pouring over legal books. Sure. Just trying to understand it, and I can't. Well, look, LegalZoom, they're not lawyers either. They're not a law firm. No, they so, are oh, lawyers. So why should I use them? <laughs> no, they're it not. sounds a, like I got my they're plan. Not a, they're not a law firm, so you don't have to pay those, you know, the law hourly fees, yeah, law firm yeah. fees. And you don't have to sit there at the library using their slow internet. Mm -hmm. And doing it yourself, whether you want to take your business to the next level or, or take control of your family's future with an estate too, plan. Yes. LegalZoom plugs you uh, and plugs right into your life so you can take care of the things that matter most. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Is this the Matrix? <laughs> they don't plug I you don't, like in the, in sit, the Wild West. I where, don't want to sit in some goo. <laughs> <laughs> LegalZoom makes you sit in goo. <laughs> they do? This is a call to action, yes. LegalZoom makes you sit in goo. If you're ready to sit in goo, I guess call I LegalZoom. I, I guess I am. I mean, it's better than my plan. <laughs> yeah. Better than sitting in the library all day. Well, get, get off to a strong start in 2018 at LegalZoom.com today and get special savings when you enter Bang Bang in the promo box at checkout. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. <laughs> Comedy bang Comedy bang. bang, bang. Um, it is. I hope that you're gathered with your loved ones or ignoring your loved ones as you listen to this. <laughs> I like the idea that someone's listening to this while their family is in the other room being together. Yeah, yeah. And you're just, just pouting in the other room. In. Yeah, just like, yeah. Oh, I want to listen to these <laughs> Paul F and Scott. <laughs> Shut, up. Shut up! Shut up, Grandma. A little Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Let me see if I can do a Napoleon Dynamite. <sighs> <sighs> Is that 
Beavis? Ah, oh, it's Beavis. Or you're it's right. Butthead. I get that. Might be Butthead. I get those two. I think you were doing Butthead. No, Buttheads. Oh, no, you're right. I was doing This, this uh, is yeah. Beavis. Corn- right. Cornolio. Fire. 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 Cornolio. He liked fire. TP for my bunghole. He liked TP for his bunghole. He liked fire. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Until it was suddenly unsafe for him to like fire. Mm-hmm. Then he liked fire no longer. The Beavis story. Was there an episode where he didn't, he stopped liking fire? No, I just think they had to phase that aspect out of his personality, perhaps, <laughs> as uh, someone set a fire uh, after watching the cartoon. Oh, how would they know? Like they said, like, how was this a, a little kid? I think it was a little kid. First of all, uh, fire is something that uh, mankind needs in order to survive. We need it. So we need it. It's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the elements. It's an instructional cool. video <laughs> in order to fire, uh, fire, teach fire, man how fire. to make fire. <laughs> um, you have a newish car, right? You're, how old is yours? Yours is 2011. 2011. Yeah. Very good. Mine is uh, tw- 2008. 2008 and still ha- only imagine? 50 50,000 miles. Why trade it in? Mine has 30 miles on it. 30? Yeah. So you don't drive it here or? I don't drive it here. <laughs> Where do you? I take a limousine here. What I do is I <laughs> I drive it back and forth in the driveway <laughs> just to feel some freedom. Just to feel powerful like yeah. a man. Well, you know, because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I have security detail that protects sure. me at all times. They, uh, they'll never let me drive around town. Of course. I noticed them tasting your food as well. Uh, they're not supposed to be doing that. They're just eating my food. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, guys. And I didn't thank you for, up your spot. Thank you for telling me. Oh, no. You're not going to fire them. Not I, on Christmas Eve, I'm Paul. I'm going to fire them on Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Old man Tompkins. So they have to tell their families. They have to look around the table and say, I just got a text message. I'm fired. <laughs> By text? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're not going to go to their house on Christmas Day. Of no, how, how can I get there? My security detail is uh, all with their families. You've given them the day off, though. That's yeah, nice. to get fired. <laughs> I would love that if like it was like Ebenezer Scrooge that was his move where he's like Bob Cratchit sure take Christmas Day off go ahead and you know what Bob te- Cratchit you're right you're right you, you should take Christmas you should have day, the day off. off and then text him you're fired <laughs> and then a sad emoji what's this a gift for Mr. Scrooge a, a mobile telephone <laughs> so let he me gives just, him the let phone let me just set it up yeah he, he, that's I mean, that's the way to do it. You get somebody a brand new phone. Just to text them, you're fired. Just to text <laughs> <laughs> Power move. I love it. Power move. Power bottom. I mean, Ebenezer <laughs> Scrooge. <laughs> Famous power bottom. Famous. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. The rankings of Dickens characters. <laughs> okay, you got Oliver Twist. <laughs> Oliver Twist is top for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Please, Dave, I want some more. You know what I mean? David Topperfield. <laughs> it's right there in the <laughs> Don't name. Don't get toppier than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes is a top. He's a top for sure. He's a top. He's a top. Let's go through all the <laughs> But famous power bottom. Famous power bottom. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs>